Hi, this is Tom Mira from World Class Coaching with this week's animated drill, which is powered by Planet Training Session Planner. So what we've got here is we have an area that is four grids of 10 by 10s. As I always say, you can adjust these as you need to. Uh, but for the 3v1 activity that we're doing today, I think 10 by 10s works really well with most age groups. So we have four grids side by side. We have three teams. Each team has four players. So we have the black team that are our attacking team. We have the yellow team, which are the defending team. And then we have the red team, which in this phase of the exercise are our neutral players, are you know basically playing with the attacking team. So here's how it works. So we're playing 3v1 in each of these grids, and we only have two soccer balls going at the same time. Now, obviously, the, the first phase of this, you could just divide up and have 3v1 activities in these grids and just be focused on the principles of 3v1. And then as a progression to that, then you can play this game where we have the team that's attacking, the black team, possessing the ball. They're trying to move the ball on this in within this grid for a certain number of passes. To begin with, you know, maybe we, you know, say that they have to make at least three passes in this grid. And then their goal is to transfer it from this grid and then move it to the other grid. So now we want them to play the neutral player on the other side, and then these players make runs. So we'll add lines here to, to show you where they're going. Um, so now we have a player making a run from this side into that side. And again, we have his teammate who just made the pass, making a run from this side into that side. So we've transitioned, we've progressed from one grid to the other. So we possessed it here with three passes, get it on the other side, and now we're trying to possess it there with three passes. Same thing's happening here. Now there has to be an awareness by this team that the ball is already in this grid, so they can't play into that grid. So if they want to transition, usually what I'll say to begin with is you can't transition diagonally. You have to transition into the adjoining grid. So they can transition by playing to the neutral player in this other grid. After three passes, now they can move the ball into this grid, and then they can move to support and possess the ball in the other grid. We'll just flip this player around so they're facing the right way. And so now we're possessing in the new grids. So we're moving the ball, we're possessing it like we would in the 3v1 activity, creating you know good angles, making sure that we have you know a short angle of support and maybe a split or, or a longer pass for support. And we're moving the ball, but then we have to have that recognition of that moment to change the play. So if the defender cuts off of an, an option and we've created our three passes, then let's get it into that other grid and let's move to support the ball now in the other grid so that we can uh, keep possession and keep moving the ball. Now, initially, when you lose possession, I'll say to the players, okay, just give it back to the attacking team. So if the ball is lost, you know, we give the ball back to that black team and we continue to attack. So there's so much that you can coach here in terms of, you know, perhaps thinking of it as you're playing through to a forward after possessing the ball and moving it through to a forward on the other side. You know, perhaps you're talking about it in terms of switching play or you're just talking about it in terms of, you know, spatial awareness and going, you know, into space and away from pressure and, you know, make sure we're passing into the supporting player and make sure this supporting player is maybe checking away because you could start with a rule that says, you know, the defender has to stay back behind that neutral player in order to make it easier for your transition. You could even make a rule that the uh, defending players, if they're not actually defending at that moment, have to be in one corner of the grid. You could put a cone in that corner and say, you know, the defenders always have to go to that cone. So we'll just, we'll just put one there just for the sake of it. And so the defenders always have to move to that corner of the grid. So that way it gives the attacking team a bit more of a chance to, you know, start their attack because now there's a defender, but they're at the far side of the grid and there's plenty of space for them, uh, you know, then to work their ball into the neutral player, keep possession, and then that defender comes in and starts uh, to press. So that would be kind of a, a way of regressing it, making it a little bit easier for, for younger teams. So as we're playing this, you know, the tempo is high with older teams, with more experienced teams. You could obviously make it a two-touch game. If you really wanted to challenge, you know, make it a one-touch game. You could always make it, you know, a one-touch pass has to follow a two-touch pass. So you can play with the rules in those ways. Um, obviously, what we would do next then is we would make the, the red team, the neutrals, maybe we would make them the attacking team. We'd make the black team the defending team and, sp and spread them out. So 
as we're playing this game, obviously only the black players initially are moving from one grid to the other. Reds are staying static within that grid, and the yellows, the defenders, are staying within their grid. So, you know, as you go along, each team gets an opportunity to both attack, defend, and serve as the neutral player. You know, eventually, as time goes on, you can get away from making the defender stay there to allowing them to move anywhere in that space. Now we've got uh, you know, opportunities to coach this neutral player on finding space. You know, maybe they hide behind that defender, they're off the shoulder of that defender, and when it looks like, you know, the ball is going to be played into them, you know, then they get in behind that defender and make the, the run to open space. And then we have to have recognition from the other player that the ball has been passed into the new grid and we get there. Obviously, the passer knows it's gone there, so you know that passer is going to move to support the ball and get to the other side. So there's so much that you can coach with this activity. What I really like about it is the high tempo, the constantly changing environment, and the fact that you can rotate each of the players through an attacking, defending, and kind of a neutral player role uh, within a, a set period of time. This is one I haven't done with my teams yet, but I'm looking forward to it uh, just because I think it's one that they'll really enjoy and they'll get a lot out of and there'll be a lot of moments to coach within this activity. So give this a try with your teams. Let me know how it goes. Leave a comment in the, in the section below. And uh, good luck and I hope it works well.